Hello and welcome, everyone. My name is Cameron May. It's 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on a Monday afternoon. And that means we're kicking off a brand new series called Getting Started with Thinkorswim. If you are brand new to that Thinkorswim platform, you're in exactly the right place. We're going to be going through some of the basics today, how to download Thinkorswim, how to navigate it, use a few of the tools. We're even going to be placing a trade. I'm looking very much forward to it. I see a lot of my familiar uh, friends out there. Great to see you all. But let's get right into this. The very first thing that we need to do is uh, review the risk associated with investing. This is important information. The information here is for general informational purposes only. It's not should not be considered an individualized, individualized recommendation or endorsement of any particular security, chart pattern, or investment strategy. Having paid for money uh, success in your trading does not guarantee that you're going to have success with your real funds, as market conditions do change, and they can change rapidly. And we need to remember that investing involves risk. And that includes the risk of loss. All right. So let's set the agenda for the day. Three items on the agenda. The first thing and the uh, the most important thing, we're going to be exploring the Thinkorswim platform navigation. But before we can do that, we need to discuss how to download download that. We're then going to get into discussing Thinkorswim trading and investing tools and resources at a, at a pretty high level. This uh, This webcast is budgeted for 25 minutes. So we're going to be moving forward at a pretty good clip. And we are going to be use, use some tools and resources to, uh, you know, place a trade, not so much evaluate uh, example strategy candidates. We'll leave that for a future discussion. But before we're done today, download, navigate, use some tools, and even place an example trade. Okay? So we do have a series here in mind. So if you are new to Thinkorswim and you want to just build your understanding of that platform gradually, do put it in your calendar to join me each week, 3 o'clock Eastern on Mondays. We're going to go through a series of lessons, and today is the lesson one, downloading and navigating Thinkorswim. Then we're going to be moving in greater detail into, into some greater depth on some of those functions on the platform, including the monitor tab, trade tab, charts, and so on. Okay? But first of all, let's talk about downloading the platform. Two places to download Thinkorswim, on Schwab.com or at Thinkorswim.com. Now, a nice thing about downloading Thinkorswim is uh, it allows you access to trading tools and uh, resources that are intended to be complementary to those that are already available to you on Schwab.com. And there is something known as a paper money version of Thinkorswim. I'll talk about that in just a moment. And, and as a final heads up, you do not need your own uh, special username and password to get into the Thinkorswim platform. You just use your Schwab login, okay? So let's talk about where to download. As, you, as I mentioned, you can download from Schwab.com or thinkorswim.com. But Schwab, I think this is going to be the most intuitive to our audience today. When you're link logged into your Schwab account, just pop up here to the trade tab and go to the uh, menu under trading platforms, click on Thinkorswim desktop. That'll assist you with on-screen prompts. It'll just guide you right through the process of downloading this software to your computer. And then once you've downloaded that, you're just going to use, as I mentioned, your Schwab username and password to log into the software. And it's going to give you access to your, to your real balances if you choose to. When you first log in, it'll ask you, are you trying to get to your real account or your live account? Or you're logging into, into something called paper money. And what I'll be using today is that paper money platform, which is a no-risk platform, which is fantastic when you're experimenting with a new strategy or a new tool. You, you can get acquainted with that. Um, without any real skin in the game, without any real risk on the table. So this is what Thinkorswim looks like. After you've downloaded that, you've logged into it, you're going to land on something called the home screen. I'm actually not going to spend much time on the home screen today, but I do want to acquaint you with the general navigation of the platform here. Okay, so we're going to start off by going to the monitor tab. That's going to be sort of our hold spot for the moment. But uh, the, the basic navigation of this software is, uh, in my view, pretty straightforward. Once you understand it, the, it's accomplished by using the uh, tabs in the left column. These We generically refer to these as gadgets, and you'll see why in just a moment. But there are also a row of tabs across the top of your screen. Okay, And as you move across that top row, you'll see as we hover over each one, it'll give us a menu of sub-tabs. So, First is our monitor tab. This is where we would come to, you know, review our current positions, monitor our, our trades and our 
orders. We can place trades by going to the trade tab, and that allows us to, act, to trade all sorts of uh, derivatives and securities. We can go to the Analyze tab. And this one I'm not going to be spending much time on today. We're going to be hitting on just a few highlights, addressing some of the broadest questions that I encounter with, with new users of Thinkorswim. We're going to be leaving other more, I don't know if you want to call them more sophisticated, but deeper tools for a later discussion where we can give specific emphasis to those. But on the Analyze tab, uh, this is, this is uh, constructed primarily for options traders who are balancing maybe a complicated portfolio of options trades. A lot of great things here. However, we can also do fundamental analysis of companies, look, at, look up economic data. We can even look at an earnings calendar, okay? Our scan function allows us to look for stocks that are important to us or even options, uh, potential trade candidates that are important to us using something known as the stock ha hacker or the options hacker, the, the spread hacker, but that is a search or screen tool, okay? Then we have the market watch tab and this market watch tab is really just for uh, keeping an eye on broader developments outside the scope of our portfolio. So instead of just looking at our individual positions, we might be looking at things like upcoming events on a calendar. We can, we can look at uh, the visualize tool, which looks at different sectors. We can set alerts for uh, notifications on new developments on individual securities or sectors, and we can look at broad quote data and, uh, and other um, individual potential investment characteristics or, or, uh, or metrics that might be important to us. What we will spend a little bit more time on today are the charts, so I'll come back to that. But in addition to that, we also have tools, education, and help. The tools uh, allow us to um, log, create a, a, a log of uh, notes and things that are important to us. We can watch videos, which is actually live streaming television videos. Um, and we can also look at uh, shared items when, when another YouTube, when, pardon me, when another um, Thinkorswim user shares information with us, we can find that here. All of that's interesting, but the education tab is something I want to highlight right now. As I hover over that education tab, you're going to see two items in the drop-down menu. We have education and then learning center, and they sound like almost the same thing. Well, this is the way that I think about the, the division between these two resources that are very helpful to these users of Thinkorswim. Education is where we might go when we want to learn broad things about maybe market analysis or strategies. The Learning Center is very specific to Thinkorswim. So I think this is appropriate today to start off with our first tool as a tool that is going to be helpful to you for learning more about Thinkorswim. So to navigate to this, you just log into Thinkorswim uh, software, go right up to Education, go to Learning Center. And the one resource I wanted to point out for you today is something called How to Thinkorswim, because I'm going to try to jam in as much as I can in this discussion today. What I would hope you're not doing is trying to catch everything I mentioned. Remember every single click, that's too much pressure, right? We just want to get generally acquainted with the broader navigation, use a few of the basic functions and get, get uh, moving forward along our own personal learning curve. But this resource right here, I think will be fabulous for you. So do make a mental note of that, how to think or swim that's found right there on that, uh, on that learning center. And then finally, of course, if you're trying to learn something, if you're struggling with how to use Thinkorswim and you need some help in real time, you can get help right here. Contact us, okay? But let's, uh, let's start to use some of the tools here. That's the general navigation. First thing that I want to point out is right up here at the top, you can uh, navigate among the different um, accounts within your portfolio. If you have a number of householded accounts, maybe you have a margin account, maybe you have an IRA account, you have other types of accounts, uh, that have been householded, you can you can see them all together or look at them individually. Okay, so for example, let's say I wanted to monitor the progress of my IRA. Right now, what we're seeing on my monitor tab is uh, all of the positions across the spectrum of all of the accounts that I have. If I want to look at the individual positions within the IRA, click at that menu up at the top and move from all accounts to, for example, IRA. If I want to look at those just in my margin account, I can go to margin account. And then again, if I want to see all together, just go to all accounts. Next thing, of course, within a portfolio, 
one of the things, first things that uh, someone asked me about when they're first using Thinkorswim is how much, how do I see how much cash I have, how much my account is worth? Okay, that's going to be found right over here in the left column among our gadgets. Now, this first gadget, the account info gadget, is fixed. We we uh, it's not um, we can't get rid of it. Basically, these others here are interchangeable. Okay, but under our account info, we're going to see a few items of potential interest here for our options traders. They can see their option buying power for our forex traders, a for a forex buying power, and then probably more interesting to a wider audience is going to be the net lick and day trades. Net lick is an abbreviation for net liquidating value. That's a bit of a mouthful. What it means is if I were to cash out the whole portfolio, sell everything, put it all in cash, how much is it all worth? That's what this is. So this is a $200,000 portfolio. Included in that portfolio is $142,000 of cash. So you might say, you'll notice it says cash and sweet vehicle. This is really the cash in the portfolio. So I might look at this and say, all right, within this portfolio, uh, well, across our portfolios, 142,000 in cash plus what? Another $58,000 of other stuff. In this case, mostly stock positions. All right. Now, looking at the rest of our gadgets, you can see that they're really, um, you can see why they're called gadgets. It's just going to be uh, interchangeable tools that are always accessible right there in that left column. It may serve us uh, one purpose or another. For example, we can see live news on a stock. Let's open this up and let's see what's going on. How about we use Microsoft as our example stock today? I can open up my live news gadget and see streaming headlines of live news and click on each one of those individually to get live news updates. I have a calculator here. I have a watch list of stocks or uh, that are that are either pre-built by me or by uh, think or swim. And I have a scratch pad where I can take notes. Hello, everybody. Okay. Now, those are not an exhaustive list of the potential gadgets. We can switch a gadget. Let's say I don't need that live news feed. Let's switch this over and let's say I want to play a game. I don't know. There are lots of things that we can do with these gadgets. So let's switch our gadget. And for example, yes, among the available gadgets, there is there are games. I can go play Tetris. All right, maybe not. Let's switch this back to live news. Okay. Just be aware that as you're, as you're uh, changing up these gadgets, switching these gadgets, there's a lot of potential tools that we can use. Some are useful, some maybe for taking a break. All right. Now, another thing is that uh, we're not limited to just having four gadgets here. I could add another gadget by clicking on the plus sign down at the bottom. That gives me access to that same menu. And why don't we throw in Tetris right there and maybe hide it for a moment. We can click on the little carrots. Those are hide or reveal icons. All right. And if I'm done with Tetris, let's just uh, delete that gadget. So by clicking on the little menu icon, I have the option to switch or delete a gadget. All right. So that's your introduction to gadgets. Just very high level. I'll let you play with it those in your own paper money portfolio, that's probably the best place to get acquainted with these things. But I wanna spend a little bit more time on some of these tabs. And I wanna to do today, just highlight a few of the basic elements of the monitor tab, the charts tab, and the trade tab, okay? Because when I first introduced somebody to Thinkorswim, they, the most common questions that I get, it's just a personal thing, but they'll say, hey, Cameron, all right, I'm just getting started with this new software. How do I get my charts? How do I place a trade? And how do I keep an eye on my trade? All the other deeper analytical stuff we'll leave for another time. But how about we start off with just an overview of the monitor tab? So if we look here, monitor again, this is where we'd go to monitor existing positions or trades that we place that haven't yet filled. There, it's basically divided into two broad areas. You can see here's today's trade activity. It literally is just today. If, there's, if there was a trade that we placed yesterday, it wouldn't be displaying here. But we can see working orders, which are, which are considered current, as long as they haven't filled. So for example, I have a working order, which is a stop order. 
on my VRTX position down here. So I can see that's a $323, $323 stop that I have in place. I can also see that an order filled today. I can see the time of that fill. I can see how many shares I bought. I can see what stock price it, or what stock it was and the price that it filled for. All right. And further down below, if I had canceled any orders or rolled any positions today, I could see that information. Now, down below is going to be not just today, but it's any current positions, regardless of when they were acquired. OK, so this is our current position statement. I can see here in this example, paper money portfolio, we have five positions, Apple, Shell, uh, TXN, BRTX and so on. And off to the right, I see a, um, a series of columns that just give me information about those positions. So if I were logging into Thinkorswim and I just wanted to see, well, what happened today and how are my positions doing? All I would do is go to the monitor tab. Look here, I can see my quantity of my positions, the uh, price that I paid, the current market price, mark is an abbreviation. I can see how much that market price has gone up or down and my profit or loss since I opened the position or also just for today. And finally, I can see, see, see something here called BP effect, that's the buying power effect, how much um, there's, there is essentially tied up in this position if it's in a margin account, okay? Very high level introduction. And yes, a lot of this is customizable. So many tools and techniques that I'm tempted to show you can't fit it in in a 25 minute presentation. That's why you want to make a note to join me in this series as we move forward. But how about let's go look at our charts. Let's add a trade and let's come back here and take a look at it in the monitor tab before we're done. So we're going to go over here to the charts. And to get you quickly acquainted with this, how about we go back to Microsoft? And when I first type in a symbol, and by the way, I don't need this left column anymore, so I'm gonna to toggle it closed. There's a margin, I can click on the margin right there, and that just hides that left column, gives me more real estate to work with here. But you'll see here, by default, I'm looking here at a one-year daily candlestick chart. So let's get quickly acquainted with the layout of the charts and some of the basic tools, and we'll go place a quick trade on Microsoft as our example. Okay, so you'll notice I put in my symbol right up here. If I don't know the symbol, I could just start typing in the name and it'll and, and uh, the system will propose a potential uh, security for me and I can choose it there. But once I've chosen my stock, I get all kinds of data regarding that stock. I can see the anywhere that I point on my chart, I can see the, the date, the open, the high, the low, the close, the range of prices for that day, and the Y just means where I am on my vertical axis here. So if I move up, my Y value goes up. As I move down, my Y value goes down. So all of that's captured right there. And across this row of tabs, I can see the current price of the stock, whether it's up or down today, the bid and the ask. I can share this um, chart if I want to create a link and send it to a friend who also uses Thinkorswim. I can add technical studies here. So frequently, users of charts will like to use their favorite technical study, for example. Let's just throw one on there very quickly. If I click on my little beaker icon, it's going to give me a menu of potential um, studies that I can use. I could go down in alphabetical order and find the one that I want out of the hundred, hundreds available. Or if I know the name, how, how about if we use RSI as an example? Let's just choose that from our menu, add that to our chart, and click Apply. And there's our um, RSI, okay? Click OK. So for those who, yet, who like to use technical indicators, that menu is how we add those indicators to the chart. Yes, they're customizable. But as we go further across this row, there are other things that we can do with our charts. For, for example, I can change my chart settings here. We'll do more of that in a future webcast. I can change my time frame. Right now we're on a one day, uh, on a one year daily chart. I wanted to see this on maybe on a three year weekly chart. I could change that right there. Let's switch it back to a one year, one day chart. I can change the style of chart here. So for example, I have um, a candle chart at the moment. I could switch this over to a line chart if I like. Let's switch that back. We can make drawings. So for example, uh, let's say I wanted to draw a line on my chart. 
I can choose my drawing tools here. I have all kinds of drawing tools. Let's just choose a trend line tool. These are also available right down here. But let's say, for example, we have a technically oriented investor who noticed that Microsoft just pushed right on up through maybe that 340 level. And maybe that leads them to some conviction that the price is likely to move higher. Can be a million reasons why an investor might choose to buy a stock. That's just one tiny little example. But I wanted to show you that function of Thinkorswim. Okay. We can also access our studies here. And for those that use price patterns, there's a price pattern tool here. But let's that's a that is a quick introduction to this chart. So many other things I could show you here today. But from here, let's go place a trade. Let's say that we wanted to buy Microsoft. How do we place a trade on Thinkorswim? Well, we want to place a trade. It's going to be a stock trade. So we're just going to go to the trade tab. And on that trade tab, we just need to make sure that we enter the correct symbol. Now, I already had that preloaded here, but we just type our symbol in there. And I can see our quote information right down here. And on Thinkorswim, placing a trade is really as simple as clicking on what you want. So to place a buy order, we click on the ask price. And that creates a complete buy order down below. The default is going to be to buy 100 shares of stock. This is a Microsoft trade. It, we can set a limit order, or we can change this to, for example, a market order. We can change our time in force. In other words, whether it's a good for the day or good till canceled order. I'm going to go ahead and place confirm and send. Not nervous about this at all because it's a simulated trade. Click confirm and send, buying 100 shares of Microsoft. Not a transaction fee or a commission on this example trade, but Thinkorswim will show fake commissions just like they would show uh, other functions of, uh, of trading. There is a reminder here with market orders, prices can change quickly in fast market conditions, resulting in execution prices that can be different from the quotes displayed at order entry. But let's send that off. And we now own 100 shares of Microsoft. And we can follow the progress of those 100 shares by going to our monitor tab. There's our 100 shares of Microsoft, and I can see how it's doing, down two bucks. Okay, guys, that is a very quick introduction to some of the basic functions of Thinkorswim. Obviously, if you don't have Thinkorswim, you might want to download it from your Schwab.com account. It's uh, free to do it. It only takes uh, a moment, and uh, it gives you access to a whole slate of potential additional resources. Also, if you enjoy these webcasts, Make sure that you are subscribed to our Trader Talks webcast from TD Ameritrade channel, okay? So you just go to YouTube, type in Trader Talks, pardon me, Trader Talks webcast from Schwab Coaching. We've had that important change. Uh, look for Schwab, Trader Talks, and make sure you're subscribed. That'll give you access to our upcoming events. And yes, people are asking, is this webcast scheduled to be uh, recorded and archived. You could find that here on our playlist. Yeah. But guys, we've accomplished what I set out to do today. When I kicked things off, we wanted to explore Thinkorswim navigation. We wanted to download it. And we wanted to even place an example trade. So we have done that. I hope you enjoyed the, the webcast. We're going to be uh, moving forward in our series next week, focusing on the monitor tab. Yeah, I kind of brushed over it. Lots of tools there to explore. I do have some suggestions for what you might want to do next. First of all, download Thinkorswim uh, desktop if you haven't done that. There's another series I think that's very complementary to this one. It's called Exploring Thinkorswim. I think that's going to be a great dovetail for these discussions. And also, review that How to Thinkorswim uh, area that I showed you in the Thinkorswim Learning Center. All right. That's a lot, everybody. Don't feel the need to have memorized everything that I just said. This webcast is scheduled to be archived. You can find it if you're subscribed. Make sure you go to that uh, that YouTube channel, uh, Trader Talks webcast from Schwab Coaching. I'm going to let you go, but thanks for giving me your time today. Remember that risk is real. We did use real examples in today's discussion. It's not a recommendation or endorsement of those securities or those strategies. I will see you again next Monday. And until then, I want to wish you the very best of luck. Happy investing. Bye-bye.